Kelly Quinn, and that's your right now traffic update. All right, Ethan, joining the show now. This is great stuff. We got a documentarian on on the show, uh, Leslie Chilcott, and uh, she's got this great new story about Helter Skelter, the American myth, and that's how it's being built here. An American myth, uh, Helter Skelter, and Leslie Chilcott joins us now. Hey, Leslie. Hey, Leslie. Hey, good morning, you guys. I wanted to say that uh, to talk about all the awards she's won, it would take us probably 10 minutes, so... You know, we'll do it after the interview. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Thanks for joining us. Oh, it's lovely to be here. Now, that really got my attention, the American myth, the way that was phrased, because I think a lot of us think we know uh, the Charles Manson and family story. Tell us maybe a little bit about what we're going to learn in the TV series debuting July 26 on the Epics Network. Thank you. That's exactly right. I think that, uh, you know, we've been talking about this particular crime for 51 years, uh, partially because the acts and the violence were so monstrous. But I think another reason is that it's hard for us to imagine that, you know, some teenagers and, and, and kids in their early 20s essentially were capable of such violence. And I think that simultaneously scares and fascinates us. And we want to say, that would never be me. I, I would never be in that cult. I would never fall for that kind of thing, you know, because they were so young that, that, you know, could that have happened to me? I mean, it was the late 60s. There was large political conflicts. There was an unpopular foreign war. Um, there was great technological change. There were, there were a lot of younger people who felt that they should retreat from society because it was so horrible. You know, a lot of similarities to now, actually. And um, we talked to a, a family member who's never been on camera um, or done anything before. One of the uh, people that met Charlie later that summer. Um, I think people will be very interested in what she has to say. And um, the American myth that you alluded to, you know, there's no myth that these horrible things happen. They absolutely did and these crimes absolutely happened but the idea that that charles manson was this criminal mastermind that had this planned race war and this step-by-step -step, um uh, you know he 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 just went from one paranoid blunder to the other there was no master plan and sort of giving the story all this weight over these years um I'm, I'm trying to take some of that away i think there i think we can do a deep dive and then we can move on and talk about other things it's interesting that you you talked about the aspect of this could never happen to me because i, I like to consume a, a, a lot of writings and uh, television shows ab about cults and cult culture, whether it's Jim Jones or David Koresh, or, and some of these uh, examples I might mention, people will go, well, that's not a call. But you say, this couldn't happen to me. And uh, what I hear again and again, whether I watch a film or a TV show about these things, is the folks who were in there and got out say to you, through the, the lens, it, it could happen to you. I'm not as weak-minded as you think I am. It, it, it Was that a theme throughout uh, your project here? Did you learn that was the case, that these folks, this could happen to anybody? I think so. I think for, for, for some people, yes. I mean, for as many people as Charlie Manson recruited into the family, a lot of people ignored him and, and didn't join. And maybe there was something in their backgrounds. Maybe they had something else going on that day. But I mean, late 60s, Los Angeles, you, should, you know, we have footage in the in the film of, you know, 100 people standing at PCH and Sunset waiting to hitchhike and everybody was meeting each other through hitchhiking. You know, it was just a it was a common thing. And who knows who was going to pick you up or who might pick you up. So I think, you know, with people were trying new philosophies, they were using LSD for the very first time in the 60s. And we were learning about the effect of of, of that drug and and the hallucinogens that for some people were mind blowing and you know they thought they saw god and then you have charlie manson preaching to you so i think there's some some scary abstractions to the story that are that are never going to be the puzzle pieces are never going to totally fit and i think that many of us that doesn't necessarily mean we would have committed the murders but there were plenty of family members who didn't commit murders and i think that's a scary thing that that maybe something like that could have happened to us leslie chilcott has the documentary coming to the epics network uh, debuting july 26 called helter skelter an american myth about charles manson and uh family he like so many evil figures, you, you know, when you hear, when, whether you read about, you know, Hitler or, who, or, or anyone like that, you read that there's sort of historians will identify a point in their life, maybe something that happened to them, an abuse, so, something that they felt that they were slighted or they were not taken seriously. Do you know or, or, or do you have an opinion on what that moment was for Charles Manson that, that turned him into this monster? 
That's a really great question. Um, in episode two, we go back to West Virginia and we do a deep dive into Charlie's um, childhood. And when he was almost five, his mother was arrested and thrown in Moundsville prison and he would go and visit her. And it is this like horrible, we, we filmed in there. Um, it's also been, been it was in um, an episode of Mindhunter. It is one of the most horrific prisons, even though it's empty now. And, and every week he, he, his uncle would bring him, you know, to visit his mother. And they would see each other through a piece of glass, but he couldn't touch her. His feet didn't reach the ground in the little waiting area. And I think that was a really scary experience for a kid. After that, he went through a series of um, reform schools and juvenile schools and things like that, and everything just kept getting worse and worse and worse and worse. He had a knack for finding trouble, for getting in trouble. And so I think probably his early teen years um, really set him off in a direction. But I got to believe even later, had some things gone differently for him, he might have been able to walk a straighter path. Um, but that didn't happen. And that's what we really look into in the series. Are killers born or made? Now, I, I, how many Manson family members did you actually speak with throughout the course of this docuseries? Over, over 10. I mean, yeah. I, I, you're obviously a, you're a trained professional. You're excellent at what you do. But didn't this creep you out? I mean, did you have nightmares talking to these people? I mean, this is like nasty stuff. There, there were some hard days. It's interesting, though, after so much time has passed, there, there's a, a lot of these folks, there's, there's, look, there's a lot of humanity to everyone, and a lot of people are very remorseful for their time with the family, even if they didn't commit any of the crime. And, you know, I spoke to Bobby Beausoleil from prison over 30 times, wow. and he's incredibly remorseful. He, he killed, and he admits it and explains it in detail, step by step, in the first episode. And he... he he feels he has to atone, and that's why he talked to me. That's why he wanted to explain what happened and how it went so wrong. Um, and that was, and he wasn't even, he was an, a friend or an associate of the, of the family, not an official family member, if you will. And that's hard to listen to. You know, that's an okay. experience that, that I've never had before. And I, I tried to think, you know, wow, this person was so young and is in prison 51 years later for something absolutely horrible that they did. But but are, are people beyond redemption? You know, and that's an interesting question to ask. You make a very severe mistake when you're very young. And as a society, you know, we put people in prison and we say that they can be redeemed if they do everything right. But as a society, are we going to forgive something like that? And I think that that's an unanswered question. What? And so... We, oh, sorry, go ahead. I tell you, Lou and I, we could talk to you forever about this, uh, but we're going to get the hook here very soon. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, so happy, we're, we're, we're looking forward that. to it. We're going to encourage all of our listeners to check out Helter Skelter, an American myth, debuting July 26th on the Epics Network. We thank you for your thank time, Thank you Leslie. so much, Leslie. Thanks so much, you guys. Bye-bye.